Hi, everyone. I'm Steve here with Brian Sanchez. Brian's at uh, Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Thanks for being with us, Brian, as always. Hey, thanks, Steve. I love every opportunity we get to try to share information with everybody that's listening. All right. So we're going to talk about something that is a passion of both of ours. And hopefully listen to this all the way through, everyone. And if you know someone who needs to get healthier, who this will change people's lives, getting in the gym. And it will do it in multiple ways. So we're going to kind of talk about a progression, how to start, where do you go from there, what to expect. So um, the, the gym is, a, and you guys may need to forward this to some of your friends that, that are listening to this because probably most of the people that listen to um, our, our interviews are people that are comfortable exercising inside, outside, everywhere. They're, they're people that think about their fitness, but a lot of people don't and they don't realize. And I would tell me what you think on this, Brian, and put this in the comment section. You guys tell me what you think. <clears throat> I will bet you 75% of the population would not go to the gym, would not get a gym membership if we paid them. If we said, hey, I'll give you 20 bucks a month if you go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week. I'm going to, and look, I've been doing this all my life. I'm going to say 75% of the population would say, no, thank you. What do you think? I, I don't know what the percentage would be, but there definitely would be people that would say no to that. We get people that sign up with our facilities and uh, they spend their money and they never show up here. We have people every now and then, I haven't had this in a long time, but years and years ago, I had a client that signed up and they didn't want to come in but they sign up for sessions and, and I can't figure that out. So I actually do think there are people out there that we could offer money to come to the gym and they just wouldn't do it. Right. So let's go over first, what to expect when you go into a gym, you know, that I always recommend that when you're going to join a gym, make sure you go to more than one or two. Don't, you might think you fall in love with the first gym, but go to two, at least go to three and see, because they're all going to be different. They're all going to feel different. It's almost like they have a different personality. It's like having somebody over for dinner. You might like to have this person over for dinner. This person's okay. And this person's okay. But you really like to have this person over for dinner. So look at it that way. And when you get to the gym, I was thinking about that uh, this today when I was working out. This is it's such a friendly place. It's such a great place to meet people. And you see people talking. I mean, they're not interrupting each other or messing up everybody's workout. But a lot of people come together and work out together and they see their friends there. The people that they've met there, men and women. You're going to meet men and women in the gym. And a lot of people you're going to like. And you're going to look forward to, if you go at lunchtime or if you go after work, you're going to look forward to seeing those people because they're going to become your friends and they're going to encourage you. Look, there's fat people in the gym. There's old people in the gym that can barely walk. Um, there's parents that bring their kids to the gym and work out with them. There's all different ages, shapes, and sizes. So try it. It is a life changer. We talked about TRT. Well, guess what? This is a bigger life changer, I would say. So talk a little bit, Brian, about when someone's going to come in and they're going to sign up, what can they expect and what should they, what's the first thing they should do and what do most clubs do? And take us through a little sequence of what to expect, maybe the first few times or the first few months or however long time frame you want to put on it. You know, first off, uh, there's a lot of information out there about how to work out. And if you've never uh, done a true workout program, I would caution doing it on your own only because 
you're going on your interpretation of what's right and wrong, which doesn't mean it's a bad thing. But if you don't have the expertise in these facilities, you may not a know how to use the equipment or really truly see how versatile some of the equipment is and what you can truly do with it. And that's where, where coming to these facilities helps out. When you're brand new to working out and exercising and, and you really haven't done a lot of this in life, you know, if you, if you go online and you, and you get your own phone app and you start following some kind of trainer online and stuff like that, you have to remember that that program, although you might have filled out information to try to personalize it a little bit, that program may not be the best thing for you because it's not taking into account a lot of issues that can be seen and discussed with a coach, if you will. When you're going to a gym, I recommend go to a facility that is staffed. Find a gym that has front desk staff, training staff, classes that are offered, stretching programs that are offered, just a lot of options for you at that gym. Because you're going to find as you get started more than more as as you get more and more involved, you're going to want to try new things because you're going to feel good. And I agree with Steve. Gyms are very happy places. The, the environment from gym to gym is important. The time of day that you go, like I don't necessarily care for working out in our facilities, you know, uh, after three or four o'clock only because it gets so busy. And I like to be able to do more than one thing and set up my own little area sometimes. And I don't necessarily have that ability because so many people are here, which is a good thing for Steve and the boys because he knows his businesses are thriving. Um, when you come into the gym, a lot of the questions that, that, that we take on are, well, how do I get started and how do I progress? I'm brand new at this. I don't know what kind of workout I should be doing. Should I do just cardio? No. Should I do just weightlifting? No. Should I work on just machines? No. You still need a program designed for you. When you come to the gym, yes, I'm a personal trainer. Yes, I work for these gyms. So, of course, I'm going to say meet with a trainer, but I absolutely mean it. When you are brand new at this and you're coming down, just talk to a coach. You do not have to sign up for sessions. But when you go with coaches and you go to facilities like ours, where your coaches are certified personal trainers, when they come from these accredited programs, depending on which one it is, there might be a little bit of variance, but they will all have programs where they put the client through an assessment. Our gyms are designed to do that. When you come to Fitness for 10 or the Parkway Athletic Clubs, you're going to go through a process with your coach on the very first time you meet them. They're going to interview you. They're going to talk about what you like and don't like. They're going to want to know how your eating is through your day. And no, they're not going to put you on a strict diet. They're going to want to know just how serious you are to working out. Because it might just sound fun to you. Are you really committed? Or does your coach have to draw that out of you? Are they going to be the one to kind of get you truly committed? Are you a person that works better in groups? You might get pointed over to the classes. Are you somebody that really wants to be by themselves because you might be a little bit shy? Well, then you're going to want to go one-on-one -on -one and away from the crowds and the coaches know how to do that. They'll make all those personality assessments. They'll also take a look at your body through movements of exercises. They're studying the imbalances in your bodies. They're looking at what muscles are tight, what muscles aren't, what muscles might be over, overactive, underactive. They're looking at your posture and your movement. They're going to ask you something as simple as, what kind of shoes do you wear? Because that's important to a coach. Are you going to be wearing shoes that, call, like if you're wearing cowboy boots every day and your heels higher than your toe all day long, solid chance your calves are going to be tight because of that heel on your cowboy boot. Very solid chance if you're first getting started. So they know they have to work with those legs in a certain way to get you properly moving. Now, when they're looking at you, you want a program that's going to start you from the very, very beginning of your ability, not where you want to be in five months. 
This is very important. First off, you're not going to be overtraining so that it's not going to be a miserable experience for you where you or you come in for a workout with your coach and you can't move for the next six days. That can happen when you just go work out with a friend because your friend's not going to design the program for you. Your friend's going to show you their workout. Well, they're probably a little more advanced when you just get started. So if you do their workout, you're not going to wash your hair for a week and a half because you can't move your arms. A coach is going to take a look at that. What they might tell you is, hey, for you, let's start you at a stability and a flexibility level. Let's stabilize your body. Let's work on your flexibility. Let's get you to be able to sit all the way down at a 90 degree angle and come back up 10 times. Let's get you to be able to touch your toes. Let's see how your balance is and let's get you on these wobble boards and allow the brain to teach the muscles how to stabilize your body so that you can hold yourself upright and use proper posture and movement in the gym. That's what the coaching crew is going to do. Then when they get you through that level and they start putting these series of exercises together, which will work you and you will burn calories, they're going to put together a strength and cardio program or a resistance and cardio program for you. They'll write this out. You don't have to think. They're going to teach you. So you're not guessing, but it's going to be designed for you as the individual. Then after they see the progress in in what you're doing, then they're going to move you to another level. Let's just call it strength and endurance. And yes, those of you who are NASM people, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm rolling down our list. They're going to throw you into a, a strength and endurance program. And they'll start moving you in that direction for a certain amount of weeks, periods, and times and start developing. They'll maintain still the stability and flexibility in your program, but now they're really going to truly be building on your body. And they're going to start working from there into that. Then at that point, depending on what you want to do, there's several directions they can go to create the body based on your goals, not your friend's goals, not the application's goals, based on things you tell your coach to do. Now you can do this all by yourself, but you got to study. You got to study a lot. The best thing about using the coaches in the gyms is you're not going to get hurt. You're definitely going to know how to use machines and you're going to learn the versatility of every piece of equipment in here. Hopefully that answers that, Steve. Yeah, that's very thorough. And uh, most gyms, I know ours do, we, we have people that will help you, help you get started. And you don't have to buy a personal training package. Maybe you buy, you go through, you do your assessment and they'll give you a program. Maybe you want two or three sessions. You can do that too. But um, they're there to help you. And this is most gyms. I don't know if all, but it's rare for a gym just to, you know, throw you out there and say, good luck. Um, Very few gyms do that. And, you know, you talked about you don't like to go in the evening. Because the gym is even different. The morning crowd is different than the lunch crowd. The lunch crowd is different than the after work crowd. The personality changes during the day. So go at different times. When are you going to go to the gym? Are you going to go before work? Are you going to go at lunchtime? Or are you going to go? Are you a senior citizen? Are you going to go at 1030 in the morning or 230 in the afternoon? as off time as you can get. So that matters too. Um, but you will get the help um, and, you know, get a, get a trainer once every three months or whatever, just to let them track you. And what are your goals? What are your objectives? What are you trying to accomplish? That's what your coach is going to find out. What are you trying to do in here? So, if they don't know that they're going to give you the wrong program. So that's the first step is know what you want to accomplish and articulate that to the coach at the gym. Any last thoughts, Brian? Hey, anything's better than nothing. If all you want to do, if you don't want to go to the gym and all you want to do is just go out with your brand new dog and walk your dog, then do it. If you're going out for 30 minutes a day walking your dog or walking with your husband or wife or your friends, whatever, that is good exercise. So don't forget that. If you're doing something that's better than nothing, 
We're just trying to invite you into the gym environment because it's good for everybody, no matter what. Yeah, try it. And a lot of people, you know, it's funny. A lot of people say, I got to get in shape before I go to the gym. <laughs> no, you don't. That's why you go to the gym. There's That's all right. shapes and sizes and all levels of conditioning because people are starting. Not everybody at the gym is fit and in shape. That's why they're going to the gym so that they can get fit and in shape. It's one of the silliest things I've ever heard. Oh, I got to I got to lose 15 pounds before I go to the gym. It's not a show. Okay. And if you want to work out at home, do some wall push ups, go for a walk, do some body squats, do something. Hey, when Steve says that, he's serious because even in the coaching environment for trainers, we come in all shapes and sizes. Don't think that everybody here is some cut figure that is immaculate and they all look like Zeus. You know, it, that's not the case. Mm -mm. It comes from all directions, shapes and sizes. For sure. It's not the, the people in the gym are normal people, normal shapes and sizes, people that you see at the grocery store. Those are the people in the gyms. They're just doing something healthy for their bodies. And I mean, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not pulling punches there. I'm not, you know, blowing smoke up people's rear ends. That's who's in the gym. The people you see in the grocery stores, all shapes and sizes, just like you see going to the mall or anywhere that you go. Um, and that might surprise you, but that's what you'll see there. Golden. All right, Brian. Thanks for being with us, and uh, thanks for your input on this. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.